Hey there, my name is Grant Hurst and you're watching Historian Essentials, the show where I give a brief explanation of some term, piece of jargon, or concept that history majors should be familiar with. And in this episode, we are looking at pseudo-history. We've covered the term history in a previous installment, so we'll just take that definition. But the other part of the word, pseudo, is a Greek word meaning false, lying, deceptive, or in appearance only. So when we combine these terms together, we get the false appearance of knowledge from inquiry. Basically, pseudo-history tries to look like history, but it isn't. Sometimes pseudo-history is created deliberately, usually with some kind of political motive. An example of this are Holocaust deniers, who go out of their way to misrepresent facts and data. It's not just anti-Semitic, it's also bad history. Another example of politically motivated pseudo-history would be the works of Ivan Van Cernema, whose book, They Came Before Columbus, was motivated by the black power movement of the 60s and 70s. On the other hand, sometimes pseudo-history can be accidental. A person can misrepresent facts simply because they're not super familiar with the subject that they're talking about, or they don't have the training or skills. A common trait of unintentional pseudo-history are works or theories that use mythology as history, not understanding the proper methodology of how to pull history out of those kinds of texts or how to properly use them. Pseudo-history, of course, is a pejorative term, and it can sometimes be used incorrectly in order to delegitimize certain works of history that are perfectly acceptable in terms of scholarly work for political reasons. For example, on the Wikipedia article for pseudohistory, the works of David Barton and his organization Wall Builders are listed under the category of religious pseudohistory. Now, you don't have to agree with Barton's politics or his interpretation of history, but I wouldn't go around calling his works pseudohistory, especially when they fall much more within the classical Whig history rather than any kind of false history. And when you dig into the sources used for this portion of the Wikipedia article, you see they're using sources like Right Wing Watch, which is in its entirety a left-wing punditry organization, and is clearly basing its accusations on political opinion. If you'd like to read more about pseudo-history, I have an article about that on casualhistorian.com that you can find linked down in the description below. If you would like to see these videos early or get your name in the end credits, then you can go to patreon.com slash casualhistorian and become a patron. So what are some other terms and jargon that you think history majors should be familiar with? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.